And I guess we are live. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, if you are there, say hi in chat. I'd love to know why you came here, how you found this live stream and everything else. So say hi in the chat. Um, it has been a while since I didn't end live stream, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. But hopefully everything will be fine. Uh, today we are going to be working on one of the badges that I have with me from Pie Maroni. Uh, so I got here with me. Well, I've got three badges actually. So I got here the Badger 2040W, the one with Wi-Fi capabilities, and that's the one that I'm like more interested in figuring out today, especially the Wi-Fi part, because I had the Badger 2040, the one that doesn't have Wi-Fi for a while now, but I'd be thinking maybe I can do something fun with making requests, especially on the side of identity. So getting like users data to show on the badge kind of automatically. Uh, so hopefully everything will be fine and you can, you know, enjoy this live stream, learn a little bit with me and see my thought process while figuring out new things, I guess. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. And please say hi in chat. I don't like to talk to myself too much. So say hi, tell me where you are from, what you're doing and why you like badges. Maybe. Have you heard of badges before? Maybe you didn't. So this is the first time. Okay, um, so I don't know about you, but the first time I actually figured out uh, e-badges was a few months ago, back in May, when I was working on a demo for an event that I was going to, PyCon US. Uh, and the funniest thing is these little things are really fun to work with, and I really love uh, working with them. Um, it has been a very interesting thing to do because I hadn't worked in anything IoT related or Arduino or anything else before. Uh, so I kind of discovered um, the badges, well, really, you know, got in touch with it um, a few months ago. And you guess what? You started with the first one, which is like a simple one, and then you want new ones, um, which is how I landed here uh, today. Uh, so basically here on top of me, you can see the badge that I already have. So once I refresh it, you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing uh, in real life. Uh, it is connected to my YouTube, my YouTube, no. <laughs> it is connected to my computer uh, via cable here. Um, I think it's a micro USB cable. Uh, yes, to USB, normal one, not USB-C. Um, and I see somebody chatting. Hi, hi from me. Hi, Leon. Uh, I, you were the same Leon that were, I was talking on Twitter. Um, if so, let me know. I'm very curious about it. Um, ah, nice. Glad that you came, that you're here. I'm so happy. Uh, so yeah, so this is the Badger 2040 up top and on my right no left side right side right side on the screen i guess uh, uh you see here tony tony is the ide that i've been using to work with these badges i don't know if other ides work as well uh but from Pymaroni, this is the the ide that they recommend and that they use in all of the uh, tutorials just a second I guess there is a fire alarm going off in the building next to mine and I just heard it. So I need to keep an eye out to see if it's going to uh, trigger the fire alarm in my building too. But anyways, uh, so yeah, so this is Tony. I gotta be honest though, I already, because this arrived here maybe two weeks ago. So I, I was already messing with it to get used to the, the new way that the files are organized and see how things are working. And so far what I did was basically update my information and configure my Wi-Fi. I'm not going to show it here because I didn't, you know, spin up a Wi-Fi connection specifically for this live stream. I might do that in the future and I don't want to show my Wi-Fi password all over the internet. But anyways, uh, so for those that are following and watching uh, that never used these type of badges before, uh, the idea would be that you put in Python scripts or I'm going to focus on Python, but I know they can run, I think it's C or C++, I don't remember which one exactly, but basically you put the scripts on the badge and they may magically can work through them. And I actually updated my badges to the new 
version of the software that runs in that batch uh, so that I can have JPG images, which I love. And that was the thing that I was being, I was working with in the past two weeks. So let's, without further ado, let's get started. So this is the badge image that comes with it. It's the badger here. You can see uh, the little badger on the right side. And if I say right and I mean left, please, I apologize in advance because I'm, I always confuse the two, even in Portuguese, which is my mother tongue. But anyways, so I already uh, set up my information here and I'm working on this badge because I want to use it as my badge uh, for an event that my company is organizing. So Okta has an identity event every year um, in San Francisco called Octane. And I've been talking about more about Octane later, but basically I'm setting up my badge to use in the event and to connect with other developers and maybe, you know, maybe have interesting conversations about IoT and identity and how you can express your identity in different ways. So for me, the badges are really fun because I can, you know, bring a little bit of my quirkiness uh, to uh, my events. And hi, Corey, you're back from vacation already. I hope so. Uh, and you're not connecting from the mountains or the forest. I don't remember where you're going. Uh, but anyways, hi. Uh, so yeah, so this is the badge and I'm going to change the image. So here I have an uh, image that is basically my Twitter profile picture and it is cut in the same size, the same dimensions as the badger is here. Um, I don't quite remember the, the dimensions so far, but basically what I'm going to do is delete this other one. Delete it. Yes, I don't want it. And I'm going to upload my photo uh, and then we can see it uh, bring up in the screen. So the way that I like to do this when I'm developing is basically if I go into the folder, I can upload it directly to the correct folder and upload to badges and you can see it here. So on the corner here, that's uh, these are the files inside my badge. So I can see every script that is in there. Uh, but on the top here, that those are the files on my computer. Um, so I already have my image now and I'm going to update the badge.txt file. That's the file that controls all of the information shown on the badge. Here you can see uh, zero by octa. My name is just T. Well, just temporal, but my name is too long to put everything in here. It doesn't look as good. Uh, so just T, uh, the event that I'm going to, which is Dev Day at Octane, and my handle on most social network, which is just temporal. And I can just change the name of the badge here. And I didn't make any typos. Good. Um, and when I'm developing with these badges, what I like to do is to, um, what do I do? I like to run the scripts on the badge to see them come up in the screen. And then I can check everything's working as I expect them to. So for example, for the badge to show this information of a given person, we use the script called badge.py inside of examples. Um, so if I double click, it's going to open that, that badge.py. I need to save my txt file. And here just press common save, uh, common a shortcut for saving stuff on, you know, software. And then I can just run the badge.py by clicking on the run current script. And that's going to run and update the screen if I did everything right. And I think I did. Look at me. I'm there. Yay. Now, this is not very helpful because on events, people are going to be seeing my face. So they don't need to see my face on the badge. But it's just a little trick that I like to do is see how easy it is to change the image that is being displayed just because I'm curious about it. So for example, what I like to do is I have my information written and I like to put a QR code instead of like a picture or something here. So people can scan the QR code and be taken to my website or to some other call to action I want to make. Yes, Pymoroni makes this very simple. Um, one thing that I noticed though, is the version that I had before installed in my old badge was it was not quite as easy to add new scripts uh, to the like the the options that we have in the badge, uh, but now the way that it, everything is set up with the new um, I don't know the name the image that runs on the badge I guess 
um, it is even easier because you can just add more icons to the list of icons you have. Maybe I should show this. So let me stop the the, the backends, the, the script that I'm currently running. And if I stop under here, you can see the child just stopped. It was interrupted. Uh, but if I double click, well, click on A and C at the same time, it should bring me back. Oh, I need to reset it first so I can actually run things using the buttons in the badge. And then I can double click. I never know how to double click. I have to try a few times until I get it right. Especially if it is on camera. Why my life is so hard. Jesus, come on, work. Oh, come on. I never know how to double click these things. Like clicking two buttons at the same time is very hard for me. Maybe I should run the main. Yes, I could do that. So I can reset it. So this basically restarts the badge and I'm going to try to click it again one more time. Yes, victory. Every time that I make, make this happen, I'm so happy. So each of these icons on the badge, on the main menu of the badge, is one script that can be run on this badge. So we have the badge script, that's the one that I was just showing. We have the clock, um, we have the ebook, which it, which has like a sample ebook, you could put all the things in there. And if I scroll down, that is fonts, you can see what fonts are available in the badge, help in case you need more help, images, like you can have a collection of images inside of the badge that are going to be displayed in black and white probably. Um, then we have info list and that info, this is the one to get, like to make sure that your connections, like your information to connect to the Wi-Fi is correct. So it kind of does a, a test. And there is news, this relies on Wi-Fi connection to show news. This is the QR gen, which is the QR code generator. And we have the weather, which if you configure the script to your latitude and longitude, you can see the weather information on your badge real time. Um, so looking at this side, because my chat is on this side. So Leon says the Wi-Fi update is so cool. Imagine being able to do this just from any Android iOS device writing in raw Python, uh, looks like this. Oh, uh, and he sent a link. I'm going to open that later. I'll keep that. And I'm going to open that later. Give me a second. So yeah, so these are the icons. And now it's very easy to add new icons to this. Um, I tried to do it before. I couldn't. So I had to, you know, mess around with the badge script a little bit. And I guess, I guess that's it. Um, so one thing that I want to do is be able to run a script that grabs like a JWT, JSON app token, uh, and validates, validates the JSON app token on the badge. So let's see if I can manage to make this happen in less than an hour because that's how much time I have today. Uh, so now it's, yeah, 43 minutes. Hopefully we're going to start it today. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to finish it, but maybe next week I can finish it on live stream as well next Friday. Um, so, so far so good. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, one, two, three, four, and then go back to the badge because I like this one. Um, so now I'm going to stop the badge from running the scripts is correct is co currently running, which is the main script. Uh, so I can see all of the information inside here. Corey says, my connection is terrible, but this is very easy and straightforward. Yes. And guess what, Corey? Uh, when we get together for, you know, whatever team sync we are doing, I can show you real time how to do this. Um, I, I guess you're going to have lots of fun. Um, so anyways, the way that I like to do this is find the script that already connects to the internet to see how they do it. I already looked through. And so I know, for example, the web script does that. Uh, and see how they make the requests and then modify it to do what I want it to do. Uh, so here in examples, we have all of those icons that I showed you. Uh, so icon badge, clock, ebook, whatever. Uh, but we also have the Python scripts uh, that are running the things. So badge, clock, ebook. And if I scroll down, 
more. We have the net info script, we have the news script, we have the QRGen script, um, and we have the weather script. So I'm going to use the weather script because I think that's the easiest. Uh, but we could use any other the ones any other of the ones that you connect to the internet and make requests. So I'm going to open this up. Oh wait, close. Something is gone. Okay, I think he got angry with me and didn't like that I was trying to open a um, thing that was already open. I clicked too much. So basically, looking through this clip script. Oh my god, my my words are not working. Um, uh, basically imports Badger 2040, that's the, the library that can work through the badge and make the badge show things that we want to show. Uh, so for example, to get what is the size of the screen on the badge, we can import the width, that's like a, a variable that already has uh, the dimensions of the badge. Uh, and they use U requests as the request library to make you know, new requests to a given endpoint somewhere on the cloud. If I were trying to be, you know, smart, I could do probably run a uh, script or learn an API on Py in Python on my computer and make requests to that API, but I want to see what I can do and make real requests. So I'm not going to modify this one, but I'm going to create a new file with uh, basically try to ping something on the internet and see what it does. So if I click on plus and I can create a new, I just realized that I closed the one. I may not need it, but anyways, um, click new. I'm going to import everything that is already in here just to make my life a little bit easier if I want. So these are my imports. I'm going to save this file just so that I know um, the name and I'm going to save it on the inside of the examples as well. And the file name is going to be, oh, let's call it jwt.py since I want to, you know, use JSON Web Tokens. Okay. And there we go. Uh, so basically, I'm not doing anything right now other than loading the libraries that I want to use, right? And the one that I'm more interested on is this one. And I probably want to show some image, maybe not, I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet. So I'm going to leave that there, but I might not need it, so I can delete it later. So doing what I like to do best, which is basically see how other developers did their stuff, and maybe inspire myself or copy the code that is already working. I'm going to copy the part that shows something on the display and I'm going to copy the part that actually does some requests. So basically this is the URL that the weather um, badge, the weather application is requesting. So I guess if I open this up, we might be able to see this take uh, take us to like a website. So if I go to Safari, oh, this is Arcane, by the way, um, the website, I can show you a little later. So if I go to this website, oh, great. So this is an API is not going to have anything loading on the front end other than a JSON, whatever. So basically, this is giving me an error, uh, value type float required for key latitude. Oh, it is missing the latitude. So if I go back and add the latitude in, which we know from here is this number, I'm going to slowly build the URL. So question mark latitude, can I give like 0, 0.0 and see what happens? Oh, it's missing the longitude now. Okay, um, but I want to have this number here just because, you know, better be safe and actually have a number for a place that actually exists. And if I go back and longitude, which is the other parameter for this URL, I'm going to give it the copy and also add that to my thing. And if I give it 0, 0.0, so now I get some data. Good. So the latitude is that, the longitude is that. Well, not necessarily the one that I put in because, you know, and it gives me a bit of information. So the time zone GMT and elevation 25. Okay. But what else did the script do? It also asked for the current weather 
with a given time zone. So let's me let's copy that too. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Time zone and what was the number the value for the time zone? Auto. Oh. Okay. Auto. And I want the longitude number as well, just to be on the safe side. I want to see the same results that I would see on the badge by running on the script. Oh, so we get different information now. So we get the latitude, longitude again to double check, just cause. Um, when was this generated? Okay, UFC offset in seconds, the time zone, Europe, London, which kind of makes sense thinking about it because Primaroni is from the um, UK region. Uh, so it makes sense that they are using a latitude and longitude that would take us there. Um, do you mind buffing the font? Thank you. Sorry, I forget about that. So yes, this is probably easier to read. So yes, going back, latitude, longitude, that was the numbers we gave in the URL as as params for the URL, and this is the time, uh, the UF UTC offset in seconds, the time zone, which is Europe and London, which kind of makes sense, and uh, the abbreviation for the time zone, BST, this is the elevation, and the current weather, look at that. So the temperature in whatever place this is, which I'm guessing might be London, um, is 23.9 very nice i don't know if this is um fahrenheit or celsius but i'm guessing celsius because of whatever date it, it is today today is the 11th yeah this makes out completely sense to me uh and we get wind speed and wind direction so let's see what the weather app actually does so it grabs this information and then does what it probably shows that on the screen right i should maybe run this app to see if it actually works Okay, so let's wait, run this, and this is going to update, connecting, connecting, oh my god, you give me chills, okay, oh, there you go, now we can see here that we have the temperature, 33.9, that we just saw in the JSON on, on, from the request that we just made, uh, wind speed, wind uh, direction, and the last update when it was, oh, that's cool, interesting. Okay, this is fun. I'm already excited. In the script, that is done by making the request to the URL we just built together on the browser, uh, getting the URL, unpacking the JSON data from the request, printing out data obtained. So if I actually take a look at the shell, we should be able to see all of that information. So client, this was the thing trying to make the request until we got something and then the URL that we just did, or maybe if I had run this before, I didn't have to build the whole URL on the browser, but anyways, data obtained and oh, this is the information we were just seeing in the browser as well. Cool. And what it does is it takes the JSON object, which is in Python, it is a dictionary uh and access all of the values based on uh the keys so for example current weather should be a value inside here somewhere so current weather and that's the whole uh dictionary of all the values like wind speed weather code whatever and whatever so it grabs the current weather which is the big dictionary with the information from the the weather it then uses current it starts in the current variable, it uses current to grab the temperature, wind speed, wind direction, da -da -da, all of the information about data and time, and closes the request so we don't have, doesn't leave that laying around somewhere. And after that, this is probably going to be used somewhere else. Uh, maybe I can make this bigger. Yes, I think this looks better. Da -da -da. So this is calculate bearings, basically to see the wind direction. I don't care much about wind direction, but you know, maybe somebody does. Um, and this is going to actually draw the information on the screen here. So first we set the pen. This is the pen color. Uh, so basically a black, white, depending on how your, your badge is set up. Um, then you clear the display, then you set the pen to zero. So basically I think it was writing before like the connecting and the, I think IP address here. 
and and then it clears it clears clears everything off and then it set the font so that we can draw the information there set a hit angle because i want to um write on all of the screen so it has to write the hit angle the weather there that's the first hit angle we're going to write and then the second hit angle so because it wants to be a hit angle starting on the zero zero position with um, 20 with it and I guess this is probably the height of this thing so 20 pixels and then it says the pen to 15 which is white on the screen here and then it writes weather I don't know exactly what these things do but we can check that later and then it says pen to black again uh, it makes sure that the font is bigger now so here we had big map 6 which was a little bit smaller now we're going to use bitmap 8 to show all of the rest of the information. So when it gets the temperature, it wants to display a different image for depending on the weather code. So basically each code means one type of weather. So snow, cloud, sun, and uh, codes for storming. And it has all of these icons inside of the icons folder here which I cannot show because it is running the script currently, uh, but it basically is inside of this folder. Okay, it makes sense. And then finally, because we want to show the information, right? Uh, I want to show the temperature, which is an app string. So basically it's going to put the temperature information. Oh, it is in Celsius, I was right, yes. Um, the temperature into the string here, temperature, and it also, um, this display doc text also takes not only the text that is, you want to show, but also how you're going to show it. So for example, what space of the screen is going to use, when does it start on the screen, so which localization on the screen. So first we have the image that's going to be displayed, then we're going to show something after the image. We need to start with the one part of the, the screen, not necessarily zero, zero. Anyway. Uh, so we get all the information there, like temperature, wind speed, wind direction, last update. Else, let's say something goes wrong. Let's say my Wi-Fi goes down and then not, is, is unable um, to get the temperature for some reason. I don't know. Something goes wrong. This JSON comes down broken with no temperature. Um, so it's unable to display the weather and show these images here. I'm not going to, you know, try to emulate this because things can go wrong. And I don't want like, I don't know, disconnect my Wi-Fi because otherwise this live stream would not be happening. Okay, so I understand now what is going on. So maybe if I have another API that I could make a call and get a JSON object back, I would have a similar result where I can show it on the display, right? So let's do this. Let's try to copy these things um, on the... Draw page, that's the screen that is going to draw the page. And I put a lot of space there because I want to copy the other thing too, the thing that actually does the request, the other method. Well, actually a function because it's not inside of a class. So the other function. And I'm trying really hard to follow along with the best practices for, you know, my code. Probably this should be before Badger. Even though I don't have all of my Python styling things here to tell me where I made a mistake or something. Okay, so two blank lines before each function. I'm going to request a different URL. What, which URL should I request? Let's think about it. Oh, I know. I know one URL that I can use. So, okay, let's see, how can I do this? I think I have that by heart, maybe. Oh, I have that on my notes. So, because I'm trying to use JSON Web Tokens, I know for a fact, for example, that there are that is a JSON uh, Web Token related object that I can grab really easily, which is my JSON web key set from Auth0. So whenever you configure your uh, application on Auth0, each tenant is going to have a collection of JSON web key sets. 
So why? When you are configuring your application on Azure, and I'm not going to show that here because I don't think that's our focus today. Uh, but the idea would be that for validating access tokens and ID tokens that were created by R0 for your application, you need to be able to access the public side of the keys uh, for a given JSON web token. So because R0 uses RS-256 as the algorithm to sign the tokens, we have a well-known endpoint that we can grab those JSON web key sets and use that to verify the signature of a given token. So I'm going to remove this part because I don't want that. And I'm going to leave here to do. I'm going to grab the URL that I want so I can fill in the information here. And I think I have that in my notes. Let's see if I can find it. Hmm. What is it? Maybe I could also do something different. I could open the Azure documentation. Okay. I didn't want to open this one. Where is my Safari? I like my Safari. Okay. On the Azure documentation, you can check all of this information. So I guess I'm going to try my find my way there. Let's see if I can remember where. I'm going to use Google. It's easier. Sorry. I my memory sucks and I forgot to write down the path. And the way that I do this usually when I don't remember these things is Google it. So odd zero um JSON web key set. And I want the URL. And I'm going to put the name tenant in there. Tenant. To see if I can find it. Oh, look at that. Thank you so much. All of the documentation team, you guys rock. Uh, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add that inside of my script and my domain. I'm going to say your domain and I'm going to turn this into an app string because I like app strings so very much. And I know for a fact my domain, should I say just domain, odd zero domain? Oh, I like that better, odd zero domain. Uh -huh. And place that here. And I'm going to say that my domain is just temporal because I have a tenant that is just temporal dot odd zero oh, dot us, which is the region of my tenant and dot at zero dot I guess is at zero dot com yes so let's try to get this to work and what I'm going to do is also I'm going to remove this part of the the image and the temperature because I don't want this to be displayed I'm going to make this fall back Mm, I don't have my shortcuts for indentation here. Maybe there is a way to configure that. I don't think I played with only enough to know. I'm going to remove this else because I'm hoping that everything will go well. Do not do this at home, kids. Um, it's not going to work out well. Uh, do, you know, either try accepts or if else is, if you must show something. And I know this is going to like be wrong because I don't have these um, variables anymore to fill in. So I'm going to comment everything and I'm going to display. And I'm going to use this part here of the, the what is the name? The method for the display text. So display text and say F. Is missing a comma here, comma, and I don't want to laugh. I want to say hi. Just to make sure it works. So I'm trying to figure my way out here. Let's hope that this these things work, right? Whether and I'm saying JT, JWT because I want something different. Uh huh. Uh, okay. 
too many blank lines. We're going to need a one. Okay, let's save this and see if it works. And I guess I need to stop that thing that was running. And I'm going to run this other one. Requesting URL. I can double check this actually. Oh, look, it worked. Data obtained. Uh, let's see this on the browser. Oh, look at that. All of the information. My brain works. Great. So basically, these are the keys, um, the public side of the key pair for my JSON Web Tokens or my tenant. Uh, let me make sure that I can see the chat. Okay, I can see the chat. Not many people talking today, which is kind of interesting, to be honest. Once again, say hi. I, I love to meet everybody that comes to the chats. Uh, so if you are there, say hi. Uh, tell me where you're from. So these are the keys that I have for my tenant. And basically what I have here is a list of keys. So I have more than one keys for my tenant, which kind of makes sense given like my scenario. So this is the first one. And these are all of the information for using a public key for a given tenant on Odd zero. Now, these things is important, like all of this information, for example, the key ID, the X5T, all of this is important, but most libraries take care of this for you. This is part of the algorithm that was used to create a pair of keys. You don't need to actually know that. Uh, you just pass this URL to your library, the one that you are using, and it will take care of, you, uh, of that for you. So it's going to get the key that it's supposed to get, and it's going to use that given key uh, for validating your JSON Web Token, whatever your application is. So I just want to make sure that I want to like that I can get the keys. And since I have two, maybe I can count how many keys I have and show which algorithm is used per key. So let's say like here the algorithm is uh, RS two hundred fifty six, which is kind of expected. I use the standard algorithm used by Out0 for all of my tenants, but it is, uh, you can configure which algorithm you can use for each, uh, for signing each key, uh, each JSON web token, sorry. Um, okay, let's go back to counting. Uh, so we know that the data was obtained. Uh, something went wrong here because display isn't defined. So let's fix that and define the things that we need to define. So, get data, draw page. Um, Leon asks, I haven't used all zero much, but is it like machine to machine off? That too, we have all of the things off that you can think of. We have SSO, we have MFA. So if you wanna configure your APIs and protect APIs, you can. If you wanna configure your websites, like regular ones or static pages or single page applications, everything, uh, we have a solution for you. So Leon, tell me what stack do you use for developing your applications? Everything Python um, is, I don't know, do you use like things like Next or any other of the many JavaScript libraries out there? Um, let me know uh, and I can help you out more. But yes, you can do machine to machine authentication or authorization, all of the goodie, very hard to get right uh, things on off. So yes, I kind of love it. Uh, it makes my life as a developer very easy because I do not like to develop plugin, logout pages and everything else. I'm not, well, I'm becoming a security expert, but I'm not a secu security expert. Uh, until I joined on zero, I was a data scientist. So I'm like finding my way in the auth world. Um, JSON Web Tokens are the things that I really love because a long time ago when I was doing an internship on web development with Jungle and Python, uh, I had to take care of JSON Web Tokens. Uh, and there wasn't, I couldn't find anything on JSON Web Tokens because I didn't know what I didn't know, basically. Uh, so this was the first topic that I actually uh, picked up when I joined Out Zero that I really love because I made content on it that I w wanted to have when I was a, starting my career in tech. So Leon says, uh, I'm a technical support, so I use Kubernetes and OpenID Connect flow. Oh yeah, makes sense. Um, JSON Web Token is something I need to learn. Oh my God, Leon, we're going to be best friends. 
I have a bunch of things on Jason Web Tokens. Jason Web Tokens are my favorite subject, actually. Um, I love how can, they can, it comes into different scenarios like access tokens for, you know, making requests to protected APIs. And it comes as in the form of ID tokens when your user logs into a, your application and you want to show information of the user without making an extra request to the backend to grab that information. So actually what I'm trying to do here, because the JSON web tokens that I want to use uh, and then I want to show the information are generated from out zero. What I'm trying to do here is bit by bit, bit the build the script that is going to grab the JSON web key set or make the request for out zero to grab the information from there after the user is logged in. So, you know, start to building things out and maybe build this into a talk on security, on IoT things and auth flows and whatnot. So I'm just trying to figure out my way here right now, but so far so good, right? Um, Leon says, I like that work, but find interesting projects is hard for me. Hence, hardware is something that I'm looking at. Something went wrong with my webcam. Oh yes, it froze. Jesus, what the, what? Was that a long time? Hopefully not. Okay, maybe I need to unplug and plug it in. Sometimes it freezes and I don't know why. Um, maybe I need to grab a different card capture um, thingy to make it work. Okay, I'm back. Hi. And I always uh, freeze. I always freeze on the weirdest um, ways. It's never when I'm smiling or anything. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, but anyways, yeah, so the data was obtained here. I can see in the shell that the information is there. So it's a matter of getting this into a, di a dictionary so I can show the information I want to show. Now, let's grab the, the part of the code that is missing for us to do that. What time is it? Okay, 15 minutes. I think we can make it. Let's see. I don't want calculate bearing because it doesn't matter for me. Uh, oh, details. Uh, while true display, keep alive, uh, out, out. Yes, I guess that's it. And then I guess we're going to still have the problem of the display doesn't like not being um, defined. So let's see where, what we missed on defining display. Oh, I guess I remember, hold on. This part, yes, this part. So the display setup is very important because if you wanna show things, you need to have a display. And I guess I didn't copy that part. So the problem with copying and pasting code is you might forget a few things. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna put the display setup here and display badge. Let's see if that now doesn't give errors when I'm running. Let's run that again. Uh, so he crashed in the URL, data obtained, no errors. And oh, look at that, data updated. Oh my God, yay. Victory, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Good. Since I don't have any, uh, what is the name, images to display, I'm going to leave that blank until I find an image that I feel comfortable putting in here. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could just bring all the text to the left, uh, so that the text is in the beginning of the badge. Uh, okay. So we are requesting the URL. Let's recap what we just did. We set up the display so that we can show things on the badge. We define what URL we are going to make a request to, to get some data so that we can show that data. Um, right now I don't need this information here, but what we are going to do is create a JSON web token object. Um, well, an object to store the JSON web key set information. So what I'm going to do is J is my JSON, uh, data from the request, and I'm going to start doing the parsing of the said JSON. And I know for a fact that we have uh, the keys and the keys are a list from the keys uh, value inside of my dictionary, my JSON object. 
so j and this is how you access information inside of a dictionary uh, especially the ones like we have here so keys and if i print keys because yes i do code printing stuff i know this is a very you know topic that is it raises some uh, conversations in the tech world, especially in Python, but you got to do what you got to do. Uh, so let's play that again. And it's going to soft reboot, request a URL, data obtained. And I guess that I got the list. Oh, this is great. So this is a list now. So keys is a list of, of the keys that I have. So I have two keys, right? So let's see if I can print out the length of keys. And I'm going to do a basic len uh, function here, give it the keys object, close the other parentheses, and run that again. Now, what might happen is because I'm requesting the URL so much, uh, Alzir is going to be mad at me because of that and starts thinking that I'm a bot and do its bot detection thing. And my requests are going to take longer to be answered. Um, so I'm going to refrain from uh, running too much of this script. So I'm going to start doing some coding and hopefully everything will work out uh, fine. So instead of like just rerunning it again and again, I'm going to do some Python magic, I guess. I could bring up my terminal and pretend that I have like a dictionary of keys or blah, blah, blah. But I guess this will be fine. Uh, okay. So we have keys, we have Lambda keys. I'm going to return back the keys and use that as my global uh, variable. And then I can use keys down there. Now, normally if I were coding a project, I would not be using these kind of things everywhere because I don't like it. Uh, not is a good idea. So I'll probably put everything inside of a class and then start instantiating the class in an object and doing all the things. I think the code looks better that way, but for testing this out, I'm fine putting things in a semi-organized way, doing these things and then refactoring this code later. So I don't want to print out this anymore. I'm going just to return the keys. I'm going to look back at the weather uh, script again just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. What did they do? So they did one variable per value they wanted to display. So temperature, wind speed, I don't know. But I can I guess I can do this on the part where I'm showing the information, right? Hmm. Maybe I can. Maybe I shouldn't. Okay, let's see. I'm going to number number of keys and this is the variable i'm going to use to save the number two there and i'm going to give length of keys i could also use the dunder method uh from keys to say length i guess yeah as i could right so for those that don't know python as much um so python each object has special methods um so python Dictionary uh, main length uh, dunder methods. These methods uh, help you give get information for a given object without actually using extra um, extra functions use of extra functions. So, for example. Um, oh, I love this website from Trey Hunter. So Python Marcells, it has great tips on how to work things in Python. Uh, sometimes I look through his website to, you know, uh, get examples, easily examples of things. So he likes to teach things. For example, list has the Dunderland method. Um, and if it doesn't, you can implement that yourself. Like, I don't think list has it, but dictionaries I know do. Uh, some sort of uh, method that actually shows how many objects it is inside of a given object. So let's go back to the Python documentation because what I want is the Dunda method. What is, why doesn't Python documentation show up in like in first place? 
Python docs data model. Objects, value types. I guess somewhere in here I might find the link probably. No. Uh, no, 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 no. Where is my dictionary? I can search the documentation. Can I? Yes. A dic dictionary. Dic dic okay. See, my English, my Brazilian brain um, not helping me figure out things I want. Glossary dictionary. Mapping to values, keys can be in the object with like under hash. You know what? I can just open my terminal and find what I want way faster. So if I go Python 3, so if I go help and dict, oh shoot. Okay, so dict is an empty dictionary, contains. Del item, get attribute, get item, init, link. Who? See? That's what I'm talking about. So, lang is a method within dictionary that I want to return the link of a self, so of a given object. So, let's go back to what we were doing before. And in Thorny, let's use the dictionary on method so for dictionaries i don't think this would be very terribly you know uh important in this case because it's a very short dictionary but sometimes some objects have some sort of optimization inside of their done the methods to make it faster better less memory consumption and everything else so if you know that the methods for a given object that you are using, it's better to use those instead of the standard, you know, LAN, whatever. But for testing purposes, the standard library uh, functions work just, just as fine. Um, because I like to try to use the other methods as much as possible, it always gives me a chance to see what other methods exist and keep my Python skills sharp. I'm trying to use them uh, as much as possible. So this should give me the link of the keys. So two. I could run this again to make sure, but I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so we have number of keys. We also want this to be a global so I can access it later, just in case. I shouldn't necessarily need the keys one, but I'm going to leave it there, just cause. I might come back later and refactor this code and remove the key, like the keys from the global setting there, uh, because I might not need that anywhere else in my code other than this function here. Okay, so we know the size of the link, the keys, so we know how many keys we have. Can we get for each key the algorithm? I think we can do a least comprehension for that, probably. Yes, let's try to do a least comprehension. Okay, so this I'm going to use my terminal once again, because you see, I want to try this, but I don't want to just keep rerunning the thing. So I'm going to create a dictionary and I'm going to call it keys to, to make my life a little bit easier. And I'm going to say that actually keys is a list. So keys is a list and is a list of dictionaries and each dictionary has a key value called a key called all in the value of some sort of string uh let's do rs 256 which is the value we're going to see for all of our keys from out zero and for this one i'm going to use a different one just so that we can see and make sure that everything is working as it should so aug of okay outside and then I want the value to be HS256, which is another algorithm you can use for signing keys. HS256 differently from HS to RS256 takes secrets instead of keys. So it's not as secure per se, uh, because you have to share, share the secret in between the part of your software 
of your applications that are going to uh, sign the tokens and the part that is going to verify the tokens. So it's best to use RS-256 instead because you can have a secret key for signing and you keep that safe, only you'll know. And then you share via JSON web key sets, the public key so other people can validate that the token you sent is, the tip, is your token. Uh, so we have a list of dictionaries here, just like we have here, a list of dictionaries. Uh, and then if I do, okay, I want to do a list comprehension. So list comprehension is a, a way for you to do a for in one line, basically. So what I'm going to do is for each dictionary, I want the value of the key alg right and because i never remember how to do list dictionaries and it has been a while i guess is the value for in whatever for the in keys maybe yes ah look at that so if you were looking to understand more list comprehensions, uh, I suggest you take a look at Trey Hunter's Python Morsels blog. It has a great, great article on list comprehensions, dict comprehensions with visual aids for that. So if you wanna, you are struggling with list comprehensions, take a look at that. It's very good. Um, I'm going to okay copy this because I know it works. I should probably use a better name, but I'm going to add that in here. So instead of D, I'm going to say for key because each key inside of the keys list. And this is going to be the algs or algorithms uh, present inside of my keys. Now, keep in mind that this is going to bring all of the algorithms. I may wanna show for example, how many different algorithms I have. And it could be one, it could be two, but I could also make account for the values that exist inside of this list. But for this moment, we are going just to use the algorithms that are present um, for that. But one thing that I wanna do is if there are duplicate names, I don't want them to be repeated. I just want them to show up once. So let's recreate the keys um, list and change this to RS again. And let's do our list comprehension again. And so I got RS, RS. I'm going to put that inside the variable. Ugs. And I'm going to do ugs and maybe what are the dunder methods or all the methods. So I can count, I can know how many um, things there are there. I can copy, clear, extend, sort, insert, pop, remove, da da da, whatever. But if I do help, like I did for the dictionary, I can take a look at the documentation for a list object and see if there is a method that can help me out. Because I guess it has, but I don't remember because it has been a while since I used any of the other methods for lists. For lists in Python, um, multiply, uh, and then wrapper reversed size of clear copy count extend number return the number of occur. This is a very difficult word for me. Occurrences of a value. Um, extend index insert pop remove reverse sort well I guess we don't have the method for giving like the count oh no count does that don't do, do, doesn't it I guess it does okay let's do this um, I guess count is going to give me how many num how many items I have in the list, not how many items per value I have in the list. Okay. 
Oh, if I do pass, I need to pass. Hmm? Oh, I see. Oh, Jesus, what did I do? Okay. There is like a two. See? Oh, but I need to know which ones I have, right? So if I do without the value there. Oh, it takes exactly one argument. Okay, got it. So let's do that again. Let's recap. So I have my keys. Each key has an algorithm. I have my list of algorithms here. And if I do count, it's going to ask me for how many, for exactly the, the value that I want to count for. So if I know there are S256, that's the number, right? I'm going to use this. So the way that I would like to do this normally would be to get the unique values of a given uh, algorithm. Uh, but since we are short on time, or actually are over time already, and I need to go back to doing all this stuff, I'm going to just uh, use the count of algorithms here. No, not here, somewhere else it's here going to save this because I want to use it. I'm going to make sure the algorithm is on my global um, key um, variable list. I'm going to remove keys because I'm not going to use that now. And I'm going to display information because we want to display information. So I want to show here's the JSON web key set info I found. So info found, Jesus, I cannot type. Um, I'm going to remove this exclamation. Some people get um, added out for this exclamation. I'm going to now note something here. Each display has a, the second value has like 28, 48, 68, 88, because that's the size of each line I want to have. Uh, so I'm going to copy here, but I need to update this value here. So each line has a value of 20. So 48. And here I want to show how many keys found, number of keys found. Uh, and I want to put in here, what is the name of my variable again that I just forgot? Uh, number of keys and I'm going to copy this because I have a tendency of making typos and I do not want to make a typo here Uh-huh, and I'm going to make this an F string just cuz and I also want to show what algorithms were there So here is 68 because 20 20 20 Algus present, present, and here I'm going to use algs. Now this is going to show a list, but we can work on making that pretty later. And the last thing I want to show, which is six eight eighty eight, is um number of keys using rs and i'm going to use here the augs.count that i just figured out how to do on my other terminal and i need to change my code here to make sure that i don't break everything and let's hope this works uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is I don't remember exactly where the algorithm is inside of this dictionary. If it is inside of another dictionary, I don't think so. But this might cause a problem. But let's run this script and make sure it works. So we already had the high. You're going to substitute that with other information. Oh, something went wrong. This hobby check has no attribute like. Oh, yes, sure. It makes sense. We don't have a list. I have a diction. Uh, we don't have a dictionary. I have a list. So instead of length, I'm going to use the standard length. Um, maybe that is like a dender size, but I don't remember. 
and I just read the documentation for it. Oh, something happened. It updated. Oh, I see what happened here. So here's the JWKS information uh, found, and it is like, because it is too long, it is going to the second line. Uh, so maybe I can just increase the, um, remove this part, right? And run that again. Let's see. It should work. At least it didn't break, so I guess that's a good sign. Okay, so here's the uh, JSON Web Key Set information, number of keys found, two algorithms present, and that also uh, eats a lot of the other ones. So I can just come in here and put that as 108 instead of 88, and run that again. And this will be the last thing we're going to show today, and maybe next week we continue our work. Um, and maybe we validate some JSON Web Tokens finally. Okay, so here's the JSON Web Key Set information, uh, number of keys found two algorithms present, RS-256. So this would be an improvement we need to make to make sure that we only show one of the algorithms found if there is like a repetition. Uh, and number of keys using RS-256, uh, two. Ah, yay, this works, I'm so proud. Um, hope you had fun, everybody. Uh, let me go back to me. Hope this was interesting to you. Uh, let me know if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you have any other feedback to give me my Twitter, X, DMs are always open, and other social network, Mastodon, uh, Blue Sky, whatever. Whatever is your preferred way to talking to your content creators or developers, I'm there. Uh, so say hi, let me know what you found about, like, what you thought about the live stream. I'm looking to improve this and make this a, a recurring thing that I do. Uh, so I really hope that this was, you know, helpful to you to figure out new things. Um, maybe next week we will do at the same time. I'm not quite sure yet, but I'll post it on my social network as soon as I know the time that I'm going to do it next week. Um, hopefully this was fun. I had a lot of fun uh, figuring this out in, you know, the open and help maybe other people figuring out the badge too. Uh, hola, hola, what? I don't know what, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Um, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Oh, glad to hear. Uh, thanks for the stream. Oh, thank you, Corey, for being here, even though you're on vacation. Uh, looking forward to connect with you at work again next week when you're back. Uh, thank you, Leon, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It was really nice uh, uh, connecting with you. Leon, I saved the link that you sent, it, sent me. I'm going to look it over uh, on my time uh, later. And um, this code that I'm working on, yes, for sure. Once I get you know, all of the comments out of it, I'm probably going to put it in on a gist uh, and share that on my Twitter. Don't... <laughs> Hey, Kari, I'm so sorry. You need to come back. We are missing you. <laughs> uh, it was really nice to have you here. Uh, thank you, everybody. See you all soon. Bye. Let's stop the stream. Oink.